Hi, Paul here from Photo Genius. Welcome to my channel where I do photography tutorials, I share tips and tricks and do occasional gear reviews as well. And in this video, what I've got is some really cool tips for taking photos of toys, just like the image on the monitor behind me, which I shot earlier today here in my home studio. There's also a theme to this week's video. Have you spotted it yet? I was a nine-year-old kid back in 1977 when Star Wars was released in cinemas, and I've been a fan ever since. I've still got some of my original figures, which are now highly collectible. And I'm actually putting this video out on May the 4th, which if you don't know, is widely recognized as Star Wars Day. So for all you fans out there, May the 4th be with you. So in this video, I'm gonna take you behind the scenes and show you how I captured these images. I've got some really cool tips to share with you for toy photography. And of course, you don't actually need to be a Star Wars fan to enjoy the video. My daughter, for example, is a big fan of Stranger Things. So with her in mind, I took this photo. And of course, I'm gonna show you how I did this as well. Now, aside from Star Wars, the inspiration for this video actually came from some Instagram accounts that I follow. I wanna give these guys a quick shout out. Trooper Nerd, Sergeant Bananas, Small Wars, The Imperial Grunt, Everything Kylo, and the amazing Mitchell Wu. These guys are amazing, so please check them out. I'll put links to their accounts in the description below this video. And some of these toy photographers go to great lengths to take amazing images and make them look as realistic as possible, creating sets, creating dioramas, using props, even going as far as using smoke bombs to create effect. Now I can't do these things here at home so I wanted to keep it really nice and simple for this video. So what I'm going to do in this video anybody could do at home. Now the camera I've been using today is my Nikon Z6 but you can use any digital DSLR, mirrorless or bridge camera, it doesn't matter too much. Now one of the first images I shot today is the image that's on the monitor behind me. It turned out to be one of my favourite photos of the day and it's a picture of this figure here which I picked up in a local toy sale for half price. Now what's behind the figure is actually my monitor. So I'm using my monitor as a background and on the monitor I've got this really cool background background. Now the background is something you can either create yourself in Photoshop if you're handy with Photoshop. You can use a screen grab um, but I actually used a um, background that I downloaded from the Star Wars website. So on the Star Wars website at the moment there's some free downloads that you can download. They're pretty cool and I'll put a link in the description below if you want to check them out. Now what you'll notice in this image is that it has a very shallow depth of field, or in other words, the background is significantly blurry. This adds depth and makes the image look more realistic. If you look at the shoulders of the Stormtrooper, you'll notice that the shoulder closest to the camera is actually pretty sharp, but the one further away is slightly out of focus. And that's again, a very shallow depth of field. Now you can achieve this sort of thing in different ways. Moving the camera closer to the subject or zooming in will help to give you a shallower depth of field. If you want a bit more sharpness, try moving the camera further away or go for a slightly wider lens. But the key here is to experiment. You'll also notice that what helps to make this photo really work is this nice red glow, this nice red light that's on the front and to the right of the trooper. Now I actually created this by using a desk lamp fitted with a bulb by Philips. So Philips, I'm not sponsored by them, make um, these bulbs called Philips Hue lights which can be controlled using a smartphone. And this is really, really cool. I use it all the time. But if you haven't got something like that, you can use a torch and find a plastic lid or something that's plasticky and semi-translucent and is colored. Now you've got a green light. Or, and I've featured this in other videos, put a pen top, here I've got a red pen top on the front of your smartphone. Turn the torch on and you've got a red light. So there are lots of cool little hacks and tricks that you can do to just enhance your image and make it look a bit more realistic. Now when taking pictures of products, or in this case toys, it's always worth spending a bit of time prepping. Working on things like composition, I spent a lot of time moving the subject around, trying different angles, um, adjusting the head, just to try and get that feeling of realism. Unfortunately with this figure, because it's quite cheap, I couldn't bend the knees or the arms, so limited in terms of how I compose the, uh, the figure, but I still think the image turned out pretty good. So I'm really, really happy with what I got. And after I finished with this figure, 
figurine. I took a really cool, fun photo of another Stormtrooper that I've got, which is a Lego figure. And I think this looks pretty neat as well. Now this next image turned out really well, but actually took a bit more work because as you'll see, there's three troopers featured in this image, but I only have the one toy. So what I had to do was take three individual images and then merge them together in Photoshop. Now, to do this, the images need to be consistent. And this is another good reason to invest in a tripod if you haven't got one, because the camera cannot move. If the images are different, they won't merge together seamlessly. You'll also notice that in this image, the trooper closest to the camera is sharp, but the ones in the background are out of focus. And this gives a feeling of realism and depth to the image. Now to do this, what I did is I shot the first image with the trooper to the left, closest to the camera. I focused on the trooper, took the picture, and then locked the focus by putting it from auto to manual focus. This simply means that the focus now will not adjust unless you start touching the lens, which of course you wouldn't do. So I then, for picture number two, move the position of the trooper, and because it was further away from the camera, it goes out of focus. I take picture number two, and then move the trooper again for picture number three, and then I take those three images, put them into Photoshop, and work my magic. Now if you're interested to know how I did this in Photoshop, let me know in the comments below and I'll put together a short tutorial video for you. So as a change to photographing the figurines, the next thing I did was moved on to this image here, which if you don't know is an image of a TIE fighter chasing the Millennium Falcon. Now, if you're not a Star Wars fan, you won't know, but the TIE fighter is the bad guys. The Millennium Falcon is the good guys. Um, these toys used to belong to my son, who's long since outgrown these, so they come back to me, which is great. Um, now, you'll also won't know if you're not a fan that the scale here is completely out. This is too small. So to make this image work, what I needed to do was place the TIE fighter, the bad guys, in the foreground, closest to the camera, and the Millennium Falcon in the background then the scale just works. Now to do this, I had one of these prodded up on a chopstick and I had another one prodded up on a pencil and I spent quite a bit of time again moving them around, trying to get the angles right, trying to make it look realistic. Once I'd got the image that I was pleased with, I took it into Photoshop to edit and remove the pencil and the chopstick. And same again, if you're interested in knowing how I did that, just let me know in the comments below and I'll put together a little tutorial on Photoshop. So let's now talk about my final image of the day, which was actually inspired by my daughter. She's a big fan of the Netflix program, Stranger Things. I love it too. So this figurine actually belongs to her and it's a figurine of Eleven, who's the main character in the program. So the image is here behind me and let's start by talking about the background. The background actually started as a simple photo of the sky that I've taken on my smartphone. I put it into Photoshop, done some editing to make it really dark and moody, and I added that nice red rich color as well, because that's kind of in keeping with the whole Stranger Things theme, if you like. Uh, once that image was up on my monitor, I, just like before, I placed the subject in the front. I went for a side light using the uh, Philips Hue desk lamp, um, which I think adds, again, helps to add some atmosphere to the image. And the camera settings, if you're interested, were ISO 100, Aperture f11 to give me a nice sharp image and the shutter speed was pretty slow here at half a second Which again is a reminder to buy if you haven't already a tripod very very important now straight out of the camera I think the image looks amazing. I was really really pleased with it But I wanted to take it to the next level So I put it into Photoshop added some lightning effects did a square crop and the final image I think looks great so I've had heaps of fun today making this video for you guys and taking photos of toys and I can see why this is fast becoming a real popular genre of photography. I hope you've enjoyed some of the tips and you've been inspired to take some photos yourselves. And if you do and you post them to Instagram, please make sure you tag at PhotogeniusBrisbane so I can see your images and check them out for myself. If you've enjoyed this video, please give us a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to my channel and down below you can leave comments, suggestions and questions. I hope to see you again sometime soon. May the force be with you. See ya. Bye.